So, let's go to R and let's actually use this formula that we talked about and compute the t-statistic for one of the sets of data. Let's set the before scores, before the training, to the five scores of 30, 28, 14, 24, and 35. And one of the sets of the after training was this set here, 35, 34, 20, 32, and 45. If we set D to the after scores minus the before scores, we find that they get this set of data. We can set D bar to be the mean of D, and S to be the standard deviation of D. The average is 7, and the standard deviation is 2. And then we can calculate the t-statistic. The t-statistic is d bar divided by s divided by the square root of n, and in this case, n is 5. And if we look at the t-statistic, it's 7.82. If we look that up in a book on the tables, we will find out that that is m much greater than what we need for the 0.05 significance level, so we can reject the null hypothesis. I just wanted to do this to show you that the formula actually works and that we can use the formula from R. But we can also have R do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. We can have it do a t-test of the after against the before scores. And because this is a repeated measure, we have to say paired equals true. And we also want to tell it that the variances underlying in the population are equal. That makes it use the formula that we developed earlier. And we want to test the alternative hypothesis, which is that the after scores are greater than the before scores. Ordinarily, it does a two-tailed test, but now I'm forcing a one-tailed test. And voila, R comes back with the answers. We get the same number for T. It tells us our degrees of freedom, and it tells us our probability value, which is far less than 0.05, which means we have a highly significant result. Let's do the t-test with that other set of data that was a little bit more spread out. In this case, the before data was the same. Our after data is 32, 30, 17, 37, and 50. We're going to again set the d to be the after minus the before scores to take a look at it. We're going to set d bar to be the mean of d and s to be the standard deviation of d. And then I'm going to show the um, D bar and S, and there's 7 and 6.44. And then again, I can calculate the T statistic as D bar divided by um, S divided by the square root of 5. And that comes out to 2.42. Again, I can use the formula, or I can just have the T test happen. And let me just use the up arrow to go back here and do a t-test, and it turns out this time the p-value is 0.036, which means that we have um, just barely significant. So the fact that they were spread out, it's still OK, it's still significant, but not as significant as the other set of data was. And that's how we can use R to do a t-test for dependent samples. In the next video, we're going to talk about the formula for independent samples and how it takes the case of when you have two different groups instead of 